Hi, today we're going to do a sew along and it's based on a blog that has been on the website for quite a while now, but it is using knits and I know sometimes we get a little nervous about that. So I thought maybe we could talk about that and talk about um, how to make this super sweet khaki with um, the ruffle bodice. So what you'll need is you will need your khaki pattern and you'll need the bodice front and back for view A. The sleeve for view A, the neckband for view A, and then you'll also need the skirt pattern piece too. We're gonna focus on the bodice because that's where all the changes are. And then the, the rest is just attaching the skirt to the bodice. So gather your things. You'll need some tracing paper. You will need to trace the front and back bodice twice. So you can go ahead and get that done and um, we'll be ready to start doing a little bit of drafting. Okay, now that you've got your bodices traced, what we're gonna do next is we're going to um, make both the front and the back bodice two pieces. And so to do that, what you need to do is you need to measure the shoulder and find the halfway point on the shoulder and just make a dot or a line. And then come down at the bottom, find the halfway point and make another line. Then you also are going to shorten your bodice an inch. So just draw a line an inch up. And if you're like me, you need a reminder. So I'm just gonna put an X there to remind me that that's gonna go away. And then if you have a French curve, you can just start at the bottom, go up to the point here, and from the bottom of the bodice up about to the armhole, it's really pretty straight. And then as you go up a little further toward the shoulder, it does curve slightly. If you don't have a French curve, it's fine. It's fine if you just draw a straight line, um, but that's just the way, that's the way I did it. So I've already done that to this other side. So now we need to make a side panel and a center front panel. So let's make the side panel first. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this front side. And we're gonna to need to cut two and I'm making a size five. So this is our line that we drew, but that's actually the stitching line. We need to add a seam allowance to that. So we're gonna measure over a quarter of an inch toward the um, center front section. And then just draw another line. So this will be your cutting line. And this will be your stitching line. So sometimes it's nice to just have a little reminder which line to cut on, and then this all goes away. So on this side, you're gonna do just the opposite. Instead of moving toward the center front, you're gonna move toward the side a quarter of an inch. I do that right? I need to do this. Um, and then draw a new line, and that will be your cutting line. And then this one will be your stitching line. So this goes away. This is a place on fold. And it's the center front. And you're just gonna cut one for my size five, okay? 
So you're gonna do the very same thing to the back. And then the next thing we need to do is to make a um, pattern piece for the ruffle. And the way we're gonna do that is you're going to measure, and you can measure whether it's the front or the back, it doesn't matter, but you're gonna measure one or the other. Since I have the front here, I'm just gonna measure it and it comes right at 11. And now your, your your front or your back will be, if not the same, within a very little amount, maybe an eighth of an inch. But typically, it's, it's gonna be pretty much the same. Um, so, once you get that number, so for me, it's 11, you need to multiply that by 1.5. So, half of 11 is five and a half. And so that's 16 and a half. And so that will be the length of your ruffle. I'm just gonna use this piece of paper. And I'm gonna use this straight edge as the edge of my ruffle. And then, um, I also need to determine how wide the ruffle will be at the widest point, which will be right at the shoulder. Um, and you have instructions that you can print off or just refer to them on your, um, on your phone. Um, and I'm making a size five. So for a size five, I need that widest part to be two and a half inches. So I'm just gonna go over here to this other straight edge and measure two and a half inches. Then I'm going to measure down that, what was it, 16 and a half. And I'm gonna draw a line here and I'm gonna draw it a half of an inch long. So your ruffle is going to, at the widest point, be up here, and then it's gonna curve down until it gets to that one half inch at the very bottom. So again, I'm going to use my French curve, just to kind of keep my curve a little smoother. probably call, uh, draw a curve better without the French curve than I am with it. I think that'll work. So right up here at the top is where you're going to write place on fold. So this is really only half the length of your ruffle. And you're gonna need to cut two. Okay. So, um, I think before we go any further, go ahead and get your drafting done for your uh, front and back bodice and get your um, ruffle, uh, your ruffle piece drawn. And um, then uh, before we actually get started with construction, um, don't cut out anything yet especially you can cut out everything except your ruffle. I just want to talk to you about how to finish the ruffle and I've come up with a couple of different ways and um, but it could change the way you cut your ruffle if you decide to do it one of these ways. So um, get everything else cut out, don't cut out your ruffles yet and we'll get started. Okay. Before you get your ruffles cut out, I wanted to talk a little bit, really just about knits in general. If you've sewn with knits at all, you've probably come across the problem of them curling, and some of them curl worse than others. Um, this is a fabric from the Children's Corner that's by a company called Art Gallery, and theirs don't curl too bad. But uh, the reason for the, uh, the curl is there is some spandex. It's usually like 5% maybe 
and um, and there's a reason for it. It's what allows the knit to recover 100%. So when you stretch it, it's going to come back and recover to that original width or length um, of your fabric. And if it's 100% cotton, um, although it's, it's, I love working with 100% cotton knits, um, they can get stretched out and, and, and really not ever recover totally. And so depending on what you're working on, but it's really nice to have that spandex in there. So after you're done with your garment and, and done fighting the curl, you'll be glad that it's in there. So this ruffle has a straight edge that will need to be finished in some way. And then the curved edge will be what is gathered up and put in the seam. And your ruffle is gonna be twice this long. This is a place on fold, so you got a lot of ruffle here. And so I was just thinking of some different ways to finish this edge. You could finish it by just pressing it twice, two small eighth inch folds and top stitching it. But honestly, it's kind of hard to do. Um, if you have a serger, you could do a rolled hem on that edge and, and that can be really sweet. Um, Another thing I thought about, and um, I don't know if you have ever made a Bunny's Knit 90 before, but if you have, you're familiar with the shell stitch that we finish the edge of the sleeves, usually the bottom of the gown and the neckline. And so I decided to see how that would look on what would be the straight edge of the ruffle. So for me, I use a, um, a blind hem stitch, which is what we suggest when you're making the Bunny Knit 90. And then I go ahead and put my width as wide as it'll go. So for me, that's a five. And then the length, um, I believe I did right around two and a half, but you can play with that. Um, and then what I did was I didn't bother pressing it first because I just want it to be barely curved um, or barely folded to the wrong side. So we're gonna stitch with the wrong side up. The other thing I do with my machine is I use a mirror image. And that's so that with a blind hem stitch, you've got a straight stitch and then you've got a zigzag over. Straight stitch, zigzag over. And when my, um, my blind hem stitch comes up. When I just choose a blind hem, it's opposite. So it's straight stitch and then a, a zigzag over. And so just to make it, I think it makes it easier for me anyway, just to go ahead and mirror image that. So once you um, get your machine set, lay your fabric under there so that this folded edge is just barely to the left of where the, the zigzag is going to swing. In other words, you have to have that needle go off the fabric to pull it in and make that shell edge. And then you might also want to increase your tension a little bit. But like I said, you're gonna play around with this and find what works best for you if you decide to use this method for finishing the edge of your ruffles. So you want just enough folded over that when your needle is um, straight stitching, it's straight stitching right at that cut edge. And then when it swings to the right, it's gonna swing off of the fabric. And it does take a little bit of practice. I'm gonna want my stitch length maybe. Well, that's not bad. Um, I've got it on 2.5 now for the length. And if this were, if I were then switching to my actual ruffle to do this, I might go to a little shorter length. But, you can see this, but it does make a sweet little um, a, a shell edge. And, um, and then after that's pressed, 
I don't think you'll have any problem with that curling anymore. I think it will lay really sweet um, as a ruffle. So that was one option. Another option is I um, was working with knit some time ago and I needed some, I needed to do ruffles and they were just straight strips, but I was dealing with the, the knit curving so badly. And I found that if you cut knit like this on the bias, and it really doesn't even have to be a true bias, but um, quite a bit of an angle. Here's the selvage, so here's, here's how the angle looks. I'm gonna do it this way. So about like that. I'm gonna rotate it back just so I can cut it easier. So I think I need a new blade. So when you're cutting out your ruffle, you could cut it on the bias like this. And now see how when this edge is stretched, how it curls even more? Well, if this were the edge of your ruffle, it doesn't curl. You can pull it all you want and it's still gonna lay flat. The disadvantage to this is it takes more fabric to cut something on the bias or even if it's not truly on the bias. Um, I mean, that's probably pretty close to a 45 degree angle from the selvage, but um, it's still gonna take more fabric. So you would just have to keep that in mind and know that you couldn't buy just what the pattern says. You may have to buy an extra, maybe an extra half, an, half a yard. I'm not really sure, but, um, but it will take more fabric. But I think that's amazing that it no longer curls. So you wouldn't do anything to that edge. Um, and I've uh, made these dresses for my granddaughters and they warm and warm and pass them down. And that edge is still straight and crisp. It hasn't started curling and knit doesn't um, fray. So you don't have to worry about that either. So that's a nice way to finish it if you want to um, purchase a little more fabric than what you normally would need. And then I thought of something else. This fabric is... Um, it's a fairly lightweight knit. And so what I did is I took my ruffle pattern and I took a piece of tissue paper and folded it and then placed that straight edge of my ruffle on my folded tissue paper and I cut a pattern that now is this wide. So it will still need to be placed on the fold, but it will look like this instead of like this. So then what I did was I pressed it in half completely. So it's not a hemmed edge, it's folded and all of the the cut edges are will be in the seam a seam allowance, and um, the reason I think this will work and be really sweet is because this is a lighter weight knit. It's not heavy, which most of our our knits are this weight, and um, I don't have to deal with any curls or any other way to finish this. And this ruffle is only, uh, you know, when we made the ruffle, it's only 1.5 in fullness, so it's even not as full as a lot of ruffles. Um, often are. So I think it's going to be fine, but um, as we give it, get started with construction, I guess we'll see. Um, I think that's all we need to talk about now. So get, decide what you're going to do with your ruffle. Get your ruffles made and gathered up. I've got another one to gather up here and then, um, and then we'll get started with some construction. So if you do, I, I still have this one to press. So I started uh, press uh, by pressing this fold. And if you find that as you're pressing the fold on that edge, if you find out that you're getting some curling of these edges, then um, just go ahead and put some pins in there to hold, hold those edges together. And then once you put your lengthened um, stitches for gathering in there, then you won't have any problem with that. That'll, uh, that stitching will take care of that for you. So get your ruffles ready and um, we'll get started. 
Okay, I've been working on my ruffles and getting those in. The first thing I did was the side, the uh, shoulder seams. I did the shoulder seams of the front and back, the center front and back. And then I did the shoulder seams of the side panels. So the main thing you need to watch is that you don't get the front and backs confused when you're putting these on because they are very, very similar. So um, just mark front and back somewhere where you can find it later and um, be sure that you're getting those on the correct side. Um, and I gathered my ruffle and then what I do is on the center front and back sections, I start by putting the ruffle there first. And so it gets stitched on the full length all the way from uh, waistline to waistline. And then after that, then the side panels will be stitched on and the um, ruffle will be sandwiched in between. So it'll look something like that. And then in the end, you've got the side with the ruffle going this way. And even though I doubled this, I think it's going to work just fine. So um, something we didn't talk about but is all in your instructions is the sleeve. I used the... Um, three-quarter length sleeve that comes in the khaki pattern and I added an inch to that length of that sleeve so that I can hem it. Depending on your size, your instructions are going to tell you uh, to add anywhere from an inch to an inch and a half. And then because um, we shortened the bodice, whatever um, the length was you shortened, depending on your size, that's how much you need to add to your skirt. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this. And then the other thing um, I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do the neckband just like it calls for it in the, in the pattern itself. So really from this point on, you are uh, just following the khaki pattern except for hemming, the, um, hemming that three quarter length sleeve. So I'll show you how that turns out. And I look forward to seeing all your creations too. Well, I got mine finished. Can't wait to see yours. See you next time.